Hi, welcome to the University of Teesside. My name is Phil Cosson, I'm one of the lecturers here at the University and I just want to show you how we use the simulation software, virtual radiography. The reason that we use it is because previously we used phantoms that we x-rayed in a live x-ray room and that meant that we had to use very small student groups and it was very time intensive for me and my colleagues who had to work and repeat the groups over and over in the lab. We found that some students hang back in the group and don't get much hands-on experience and it meant that the students had a very fragmented timetable because some of them had to wait till late on in the afternoon to go in for their one or two hours in the lab. What we've got up here at the moment is our lecture VR um, program that we use. Now we use this not just in this lab, but we use this around campus on a laptop. We can take it wherever we want. And we actually allows us to actually project any image in a lecture and then just show that being moved around so we can demonstrate good and not so good radiographic technique just by the click of a button. So we find that very powerful. Now Technic VR Again, we use this in lecture format where we actually have a lecture pre-prepared. We maybe have a PowerPoint that we go through and we used to actually have a static graph of the X-ray spectrum coming out of an X-ray tube. Instead of having a static graph in our PowerPoint, we just flick to this program and we have a graph. We have various dials that demonstrate the ratings and the heat output and the dose. And then we can just change things so we can change, for example, whether the generator is a single phase generator or a high frequency generator. And we can change the KVP and the MAS. And the graph responds to that change. So we find this extremely useful. And the students can actually interact with the program during a lecture. So they can say, well, in my hospital, we use 70 kV. In my hospital we use 80 kV and we can just show them what the spectrum would look like. And isn't it great to have the physics all encapsulated into a program so that I don't have to think about the physics when I'm teaching the radiography. Um, all the calculations done by the software, I can't really get it wrong. If you've heard of virtual radiography software before, then you're probably interested in this program and this program is the one that we use in this lab. We actually sit 20 students in this lab in one sitting and they actually get to manipulate the x-ray room they can move the actual x-ray tube and they can move the bucky tray and put cassettes in the bucky tray now we get our students to work in here for approximately eight hours. So they have each eight hours of experience using a virtual x-ray room, making their own exposures to a virtual patient before they go into clinical placement. It's a great feeling when you see students take their first virtual x-ray and they get the image back. Um, and this is of course something that they can't do with role play. I really like it when students um, copy and paste the images that they get into a Word document. I found the other day a student doing that in the lesson and I said, why are you doing that? And they said, that's the first x-ray I've ever taken and I'm going to copy that and paste it in my um, Word document. I'm going to put it in my portfolio. And I thought, that's brilliant. They've only been in the program a week and a half and they're already pasting x-rays that they're proud of taking because they fulfill all the radiographic criteria we've given them and they're going to put that in their portfolio. Because we have 40 students, we run the lab twice, so we have 20 in the first session and then 20 in the second session. So in two hours of my time, each student gets an hour of one-to-one -one tuition with a manual, a workbook that they run through, and the software. And it covers all the terminology of what an erect bucky is, what a cassette is, what a bucky tray is, what cranial angulation is, chordal angulation, patient positioning terminology, all of this is dealt with in this lab. When I first started as a university lecturer here at Teesside in 2001, I envisaged having a program that could do this. I remember saying to my colleagues, wouldn't it be great if we could actually simulate x-rays 
in a computer and so they'd get some experience before they went on to practice. And I'm really, really impressed that in 2009 we can actually do that. So it only took eight years, but now we can actually do the things that I dreamt of doing in 2001.